My dear friends, we live in troubled times. I invite you now to join in this prayer for peace in the Middle East. God of mercy and compassion, of grace and reconciliation, pour your power upon all your children in the Middle East. Jews, Muslims, and Christians, Palestinians, and Israelis. Let hatred be turned into love, fear to trust, despair to hope, oppression to freedom, that violent encounters may be replaced by loving embraces, and that peace and justice could be experienced by all. Amen. From the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel, with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I am Father Francis Salesiar. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contributions from three donors. The first is Barbara Francis and family from Brampton, Ontario, in memory of Anthony Francis and for all her deceased family members, relatives, and friends, in thanksgiving for blessings and graces received and for the return of her family to their faith. The second are anonymous donors from Scarborough, Ontario, in thanksgiving for blessings received and for the intentions of their children, grandchildren, family, friends, and the viewers of the daily TV Mass. They also offer this Mass for the lonely, the forgotten, and the homeless. The third is Catherine Gary from Fergus, Ontario, in loving memory of her husband, Kevin Gary, and for the intentions of the True Acts and Gary families of Ontario and Montreal, Quebec. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the memorial feast of Saint Ignatius of Antioch, bishop and martyr. As we come to celebrate this Eucharist, we are reminded often times than we like, we make the means as of an end. Jesus challenges our understanding and invites us to reflect to follow the spirit of the law rather than the letter of the law. So let us ask God's pardon and mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call the sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who adorned the sacred body of your church with the confession of holy martyrs, grant, we pray, that just as the glorious passion of St. Ignatius of Antioch, which we celebrate today, brought him eternal splendor, so it may be for us unending protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. I am not ashamed of their gospel. It is the power of God for salvation to everyone who has faith, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed through faith for faith. As it is written, the one who is righteous will live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and wickedness of those who by their wickedness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. Ever since the creation of the world, his eternal power and divine nature, invisible though they are, have been understood 
and seen through the things he has made. So they are without excuse, for though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking, and their senseless minds were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools, and they exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling a mortal human being, or birds, or four-footed animals, or reptiles. Therefore God gave them up in the lusts of their hearts, to impurity, to the degrading of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. While Jesus was speaking to the crowds, a Pharisee invited him to dine with him. So Jesus went in and took his place at the table. The Pharisee was amazed to see that he did not first wash before dinner. Then the Lord said to him, now you Pharisees, clean the outside of the cup and of the dish, but inside you are full of greed and wickedness. You fools, did not the one who made the outside make the inside also? So give for alms those things that are within, and see everything will be clean for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. There's a story told about this baker named Sam who had a thriving business in a small town. He supplied the town with the delicious pastries, bread, and cakes. He worked tirelessly to build his business from the ground up, often sacrificing his time and relationships. 
He believed that success was measured solely by the growth of his bakery. One autumn morning, Sam received a letter that would change his life. The letter was from his childhood friend, Ella, who had moved away to a nearby countryside years ago. Ella had heard about Sam's success and decided to visit him. As Ella arrived at the bakery, Sam greeted her with a forced smile. His mind was already preoccupied with the day's tasks and goals. Ella, on the other hand, looked calm and content. She had a radiance about her that Sam could not help but notice. Ella spoke of her simple life, surrounded by nature's beauty, friends' laughter, and the community's warmth. Ella did not have a successful business, but she had something that Sam realized he had been missing. As days turned into week, weeks, Ella visited Sam often. One evening, as they watched the sun dip below the horizon, Ella turned to Sam and said, you have been so busy chasing success, and you have missed the important things in life, Sam. It's not just about the bakery. It's about the moments we share, the people we love, and the simple joys that surround us. Hard work and striving for success are important parts of life, but they should not consume us. Similarly, rules, regulations, and rituals are important part of being human, but they should not consume us. That's a message Jesus is trying to convey to the Pharisees. The word that became flesh, the savior of the world, the Messiah is dwelling amidst them. And the Pharisees are worried about the failure of cleansing the rich cleansing the hand. The religious leaders let the ritual aspect of their life get in the way of true relationship with the God. These people are so wrapped up in their little man-made rules that they lost their love and passion for God. When our faith is based on the letter of the law instead of the spirit of the law, we will spend our time too doing what will make us look good on the outside while allowing the inside to rot. Jesus challenges us to shift our focus from the external rituals of the faith to the internal disposition of the heart. He reminds us that faith is not performance, a show, or a mere ritual. Faith is not merely about appearing pious or righteous from the outside. Instead, it is about our heart's condition, inner motives, and relationship with the God. If we are honest with ourselves, we are all guilty to some extent of being concerned about the outward appearance of our faith. We may attend church regularly, recite prayers, and participate in religious ceremonies, and yet, like the Pharisees, we can forget the substance of our faith. We can forget the central message of love, compassion, and mercy that Jesus taught and lived. Don't get me wrong. Rituals, traditions, symbols have their place in our faith journey. They help us to connect with the God and express our devotion. However, they must never become substitutes for the genuine transformation of our hearts. We must not let our religious practices become empty rituals, devoid of love and authenticity. Oftentimes, we are so much worried about our rituals that we forget about the meaning of the rituals. So, dear brothers and sisters, we are challenged 
with the gospel of today to examine ourselves, to cleanse our hearts from greed, wickedness, and hypocrisy. When our faith is rooted in the substance of love, compassion, and righteousness, then the symbols and rituals we observe will naturally reflect the depth of our relationship with the God. If we don't have that internal transformation, then we may say all the prayers and do the rituals. It does not make any meaning for us or for our relationship with the God. As we reflect on this gospel, let us ask ourselves, are we more concerned with the appearance of our faith or do we prioritize the substance of it? Are we quick to judge others based on external actions or do we look within our own hearts? Are we living out the teachings of Christ in our daily lives or are we merely going through the motions of religious observances? Which is more important to God, clean hands or a clean heart and mind? Let us bring forth our prayers and petitions as we come together celebrating the feast of Ignatius of Antioch, Bishop and Martyr, may we continue to pray for all the faithful who continue to suffer persecution because of what they believe and profess. For their strength, we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for ourselves that we may continue to imitate the life story of Saint Ignatius. May we continue to share our true love for God and one another in our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for all those in our daily TV Mass Prayer Intentions book, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our During this season of Thanksgiving, we thank God for all the blessings we have been given, and we pray for continued blessings on ourselves, our neighbors, and our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us take a moment of silence to bring to God our own prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us make all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Bless be God forever. Wash me, listen, listen. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May this oblation and our homage be pleasing to you, O Lord, just as you accepted St. Ignatius, the wheat of Christ, made pure bread through his martyrdom and passion, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. 
In your mercy, you give order to their faith. To their endurance, you grant firm resolve, and in their struggle, the victory is yours. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out without end, we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have called us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Francis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the heavenly bread we have received, O Lord, on the feast day of St. Ignatius, renew us, we pray, and make us Christians in the name and in deed, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace to love and serve one another. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.